important guy in the world, Ryan Stone. Give a fuck about Ryan Stone. Me and him have gone back and forth. Blah, blah, yeah. blah. Ryan Stone does not pass the six foot test. He's not even a man. So I don't give a fuck with Ryan Stone. Seventy-nine T twenty-four fifty-eight Learning, Learning Corp Little Red Riding Hood Take One. Probably should show up to my own. <laughs> hey, it's got fellas. All right, I had a couple thoughts, and we're gonna we're gonna riff this one. We're riffing this one. Cause I'm in, I'm in a goatsy mood, not like doing the goatsy, but like annoyed with people. I'm just like, I just want to do my job. I was even joking around about leaving, leaving the manosphere. Like everybody has to have one of those, but now I'm like, it left me, it left me. So I'm going to take it out on you guys. I hope you enjoy this. Cause it's going to be good. We're riffing. It's not as structured as usual, but some of you guys actually prefer when I just run off at the mouth and free form it. So, you know, F it, F it. We're doing it live. There's a 2000s meme for you. Did the Tate ad even go through? Because I want to give you guys like a feel for like this kind of stuff. This is the theme of today's episode. This right One here. of the guys who ran the Red Pill channel sent me a message. I actually appreciate that you took it from an idea-based perspective instead of ever resorting to personal attack. Like if this movement is actually going to be dangerous, do we need to understand it so that we can take it down? I knew going into it that this might be a hot mess. I'm not going to have those guys back on my channel again. Absolutely not. So the background on that one, that is an account called Savvy Writes Books. And I thought it was rather neat. I learned about them through that Emily chick, the one that looks like the 13-year-old boy on this thing. It was making fun of Rich Cooper for his one video. And most people just point and sputter. And they screech. And I'm like, you know what? These ones are actually trying to have ideas. I think that'd be great. And I go to talk. I'm like, hey, did you reach out. It'd be nice. It's, it was like I said, it was like nice to hear some actual critique. It'd be great. And the one's like, no, I hate everything you stand for. And I think you're not. And I'm like, all right, fair enough. And then that one did. Mostly cordial, mostly friendly, but her audience lost their goddamn mind. So she had to lose her damn mind. And I'm just seeing this again. It was a want back in my naive older days to see people who like are engaged with the idea of rule zero, you know, positive male identity and male sexual strategy and maybe disagree on the details. But no, it's never what we get. That's never what we get. Do you know what we get? We get people who are like, this is my claim to fame. If I yell at Rolo Tomasi long enough, if I yell at all of these red pill guys online, if I have an argument like a soccer mom in a Facebook chat, I think I can finally be famous. And I hate this crap so much. And I don't know who did it. I don't know who to blame. I don't know who I need to talk to. I don't know who deserves a punch in the neck. But somebody invited, not even Christians. It's like, uh, they call them, like the Catholics would call them 15 minute converts. Basically people who joined the church yesterday and then they turn around and tell everybody else, you guys need to join. This is the coolest year ever, man. You got to get in here. And don't know anything. Don't know how to do anything. And it's just posturing. Posturing. posturing and it's the most annoying thing you've ever heard and i get it if you guys are on this channel and you're not following a lot of it you probably don't see it which great for you i think it's wonderful why are you bringing this into my life i'm not i mean i am <laughs> i am i brought my best dad core outfit just to do it all right and here's what happens a bunch of christians will be like you know what sucks red pill guys the way they like to murder babies and then 500 dudes who's like last thing I need from them is to be talking anything red pill or like actually red pill is just this and they're like you're just an idiot oh I know what it is it was effing Rolo man yeah fleeting citrusness it was when he made fun of that stupid cake chick with the tits and then all of a sudden her little Christian follower started you know what I'm gonna hate on him because that's the cool what's what all the cool kids are doing and now they're in there constantly and I can't send so I don't want to debate I don't want a conversation I don't like you know, let me just hear your thoughts and then you can hear mine. We can have a communication. I'm like, my brother is my brother's in Christ. I have been telling guys for five years now here, 10 years there before you knew who I was about how communicating with your wife is just wasted effort and you don't need to be doing that. And then you come online. It's like, yeah, 
the girl that I've decided to spend my life with, the one I love, I'm not going to have a communication with her. What makes you think I'm going to have a communication with anime Jesus Christ pill 2079? Like, are you fucking stupid? My God, man. And the worst part, this is the worst part. Like, whatever. If it was just a little bit of, you know, hey, let's make fun of guys, let's throw some goatsy, whatever. Uh, and Dre, I see your thing. I'll get to it. But it's like distracting people that otherwise have work to do, you know? I've, like, obviously my mids watch things, the podcast is still going great, and the book is done. So, like, I, my conscience is clear. But I see a lot of guys now, even from, like, my little close group of friends that are now deciding to make their content cater to this nonsense. And that's the part that hurts. Uh, nonstop Dre, 360, $2 super chat. Why aren't you playing Tekken 8 button mashing now? I've had a few games. I just got it yesterday. Uh, I haven't finished the Tekken for pennies ad yet, so that's on the list. I will say, though, I think Tekken for pennies is going to be a thing. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, there's going to be a wonderful ad. So that, that Tate one that I show you guys all the time. Yeah, it's funny. Oh, Ryan's not a six foot guy. He's not a man. Somebody else is like, you realize there's like 45 minutes of him roasting you, right? I'm like, really? That's awesome. And uh, Kyle, who I've been on the show before with him, showed me the one where he's like, this guy, his wife's a Ford, he plays Tekken for pennies. And I was like, Tekken for pennies is a wonderful name for a series, so I'm totally doing it. So that's going to be on the second channel. Looking forward to it. Yeah, real men pay Street Fighter. 45 minutes of content. Yeah, I mean, whichever. I'll use it as I see fit. I don't want to have, like, the anti-Tate channel. I like having a variety of people that shit all over me. Uh, oh, uh, so the point of this is, and this is kind of what we're going to explore, because I don't have I don't have it codified into, like, a proper thing that I could turn into a lesson plan. But when distraction gets in the way of sexual strategy, it's like that's kind of the vibe I'm going for here. And there's a couple, there's a couple things that I'm trying to tie together. You know that Rolo, like, I'm connecting the dots. It's like that but not four hours long. <laughs> oh, I love you, buddy, but if I don't roast you, who will? There it is. So it's kind of... Um, I wanted to do something different on the Substack and the this start part here, and I think our rule zero, we're going to be talking about words, definitions matter, which is pretty much tied into this stuff. But, uh, like, Red Pill's loser talk. Like, stop, stop talking about it like i get it for me it's a job i have to it's my thing i even avoid it as much as possible if you read through any of my books at least the last two frame and dread i've gone out of my way to remove all jargon from it i think i even used the words red pill maybe three times in 180,000 words of text like i just don't use it i find for a couple reasons one the jargon actually works against you and two it makes you sound like a moron that's right. It's new coasting at this one. So it's going to be it's going to be something. Oh, you're the best, baby. There we go. Don't eat paint, fellas. Ah, oh, toasty. Toasty, toasty. Yeah, so the first part. Okay, so how am I going to do this? I know I'm going to talk about distraction. I know I'm going to talk about the the feeling of being smart. I'm not sure how I'm going to riff these well. Like, uh, we're, we're free form in it. And then the next one was loser talk. Yeah, yeah. So that's like the big three themes, right? And um, then I have to think to myself, how does this apply to you guys? Because if it's just me bitching about podcast drama, then how is that any different than the old school? Do you remember the meme about, about uh, comedians when they stop having real lives and they start like, what's up with the airline food? And once you start having that airline food moment where you're like completely detached from things that your audience would find useful. So I have to look at these things and I'm like, what kind of stuff would be applicable from somebody who does not care about any of this stuff? And I thought about it and I'm like, this is totally applicable because everybody's acting like a chick nowadays. So if you have a chick at your house, just deal with this. And like, why can I not make this cheeky? I'll put on my best Florida man hairdo. Make it a day. So first up is distraction. Where is, speaking of distraction. We know that these videos really prey on vulnerable young men who have not had many experiences in dating. Uh, 
That boy is right. You don't have much experiences in dating. <laughs> Couch is sour alpha. His opponents were out of rage quit. <laughs> nice. Well, to be fair, I do send Goatsy out a lot. Like, as soon as somebody's like, I want to have a conversation, I just send him a picture of somebody pulling apart his ass. <laughs> I'm like, Eric, what's this? You've given me a lot to think about, sir. <laughs> if you're not having fun, why are you doing this? You know what I mean? Why are you doing this? Oh, no, oh, before I start, so I was talking about the vibe, and I realized, like, why did I make this thing at Saturday morning at 9? Everybody... Like, Fresh and Fit have a perfect solution to theirs. At least they used to. I don't know if they still do. The After Hours one. Friday night. The prime hour to go hit on chicks. And they're like, these losers aren't hitting on anybody. So they're going to watch me and throw money to give have me yell at, you know, trad insta thoughts or whatever. Brilliant. Brilliant. Mine's for the people. It's like, dude, if you're out partying all night, you're going to be hungover. And you're not going to wake up this early. I'm like, oh, touche. You will. I'm remembering my military time. My 20s. My whole 20s was like that. Friday... Um, I mean, if you weren't on shift work, it was like Friday, you went and you went hard. And then Saturday, you always had a duty watch. For some reason, the best times to party the latest was always when you had a 630 in the morning duty watch the next day. And so you'd be up at six or you'd be up at like five to go to work at six to get there for 630. Because if you're not half an hour early, you're late. And then you're sitting there by your, it's not even daylight yet. It's still dark out. You're like, are you hung over? Like, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> not yet and you have the whole ship to yourself just you and like 12 other guys from your duty watch and he's just hanging out and the vibe and i realized these saturday morning nobody's even up yet except for you and me you and me in the hole in the wall and i'm like yeah these are these are the the saturday morning hungover duty watch vibes i almost want to call it if i ever like leave the sphere and decide to do a podcast again at this time i will call it some derivative of saturday morning cartoons because i want you guys to have that exactly saturday morning cartoons you know ah wife i can't listen to you i'm listening to some guy rant on the internet about whammon it's like just take me to bed no <laughs> so that's the one i'm going with this so the first part's distraction and i was thinking about distractions and it's amazing how many guys get distracted and how easy it is i We'll start this off with, I was dealing with, uh, I'm talking to Patreon. It was a while back, a while back. I, I like to kind of put some space in it so things don't seem recent. I try to, I really take the discretion of the members and they're good, but sometimes there's a theme that's just too good. And while I don't mention names or anything, I do bring it out here. And a lot of guys have this issue where they're, they're sucked into the red pill space or the manosphere or the Jordan Peterson or the traditional conservative, like any space. It doesn't even really matter. The Minecraft Let's Play space, whatever. And they're like, it's amazing. And they'll watch an hour-long lecture. They watch a, a playlist of Christopher Hitchens taking down the atheists or whatever. And they're loving it. And they're like, this is great. And you they talk to you like, man, you should see this. Peterson just said something that changed my life. I'm like, really? Well, what did he say? And this is the part that I noticed where a guy's like, I couldn't tell you. But here, here's the link to it. And I realized we have replaced entertainment and distraction with the feeling of being smart as entertainment and distraction. This is your Ben Shapiro. This is your destiny. And this is your Jordan Peterson to extend, at least the new Jordan Peterson, the one who's wearing Jordan Peterson as a skin suit. This is the one where <laughs> Ryan sprinkles enough beta on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I realized this, like you'll watch... Uh, an entire hour-long lecture where um, Peterson, for example, talks about the, the shadow going into the thing and Stichinitsa or whatever. Solchinitsa. <laughs> Itchy Mitchies. And at the end of it, you're like, wow, I learned so much. But you can't articulate it, which means you can't apply it, which means you feel smart because you heard fancy words strung together, probably good concepts, but you can't articulate it. And so all you can do is like, here's a link. You watch it, you'll get what I get. And it totally ties into this very old, and I don't use it nearly enough, a red-pilled concept, like, you must put this bucket on your head right now. And this is the, like, how do you handle a situation where somebody is telling you that, you know, they have a bucket on their head. You're like, inside this bucket is the most amazing stuff. It'll fix your life. It'll fix everything. You're like, really? But you can't see inside the bucket unless you put it on your head. It's a metaphor, obviously, for joining somebody's stupid fucking cargo cult. But you get what I'm saying here, right? And 
you're like, okay, but I don't have enough information to know if that's an informed choice to put that bu- that particular bucket on my head or not. Or, you know, is it the traditional conservative Twitter thing? Is it the, the Orthodox Catholic Andrew thing? Or is it the red pill thing? Yeah. Well, and they're like, well, what you can do as a proxy is you just look at the person who's who's cheerleading it, right? Do they look like the kind of guy who, who claim, like, you're going to join this thing and it's going to be great. You're going to get this. You're going to get that. You look at them. Do they have it? It's kind of similar to how Rich Cooper says, uh, would you trade places with that guy? But it's not the same. It's not about trading places with the guy. It's is the guy in his own life getting the delivery of what he promised. And I see now that I, and I, once I made a point to look for it there, you see it everywhere. And this is where all the distraction comes from. Melanie Mack. I don't know if you've heard of her. She's some, I think she's 37. She's like an e-girl. She goes on to this podcast. She's a bunch. Her big thing is like eating butter, like carnivore diet, because that's what real people do. So she's eating a stick of butter. I guess that's the new eating a banana for Zoomers now, you know, seductively eating a banana. And she was sitting there like, you guys shouldn't be fornicating. You should be taking the Christ pill. I was like, what the hell? And I click on this thing because I'm just like, you know, rubbernecking. I love watching an accident. Leave these red pill guys alone and go for the trad pill and stop fornicating. And then the first come underneath of somebody's like, hey, uh, if you're all like Christ pilled, shouldn't you be married with a family right now? And she goes, well, actually, I've been divorced for three years and I've been living in monk mode. But, you know, if the, if the Lord wants to provide me a husband and a family, then so be it. And I'm like, oh, my brother in Christ, what the hell? So that's an example. Like, put this bucket on your head right now. Well, how's the bucket working out for her? By her own measure. I'm not saying this as like she's a bad person or I don't like her or any of that stuff. But she's making a bunch of claims telling you you need to join this cargo cult she's in. And she hasn't met any of them. In fact, the exact opposite. And so right there, you know, it's not a bucket on them. Their bucket on the head is cope. And I'm noticing this when you see this goofball stuff. And it's not just it's not just the the religious, you know, conservative fake I don't even call them. I don't even want to call them Christian because, like, I have Christian friends. They go to church. They have husbands. They have wives. They got married. They have kids. They get laid. They're normal people. Not like this crap you see, you know. And <laughs> nun mode, yeah. Oh, that's good stuff. But uh, and I'm like, you could apply it everywhere. You could apply it to the red pill if you really wanted to. A lot of guys are like Myron's talking about the red pill this and red pill that. And then you look at his bucket. Bro, 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 you got to have this. You got to have that. Kind of ties in with last week when I was saying when we were talking about canceling, like I think they canceled James Tuss. They removed his channel in that for no reason. And I got I'm I'm I I didn't want to shit on James. because I like him. But I'm like, for all of you guys talking about, bro, you have to have multiple streams of income. You need to be anti fragile because I read the book. I'm like, you could do something. Meanwhile, Myron's like, yeah, be anti-fragile, multiple streams of income. They they defund his fresh and fit episodes, and he starts crying on camera about being poor. I'm like, my dear God, man, do you not follow your own advice? Do you want, hey, put this bucket on your head. Well, how's it working out for you? It's not. And he was, uh, null, 20 euro super chat, thank you very much. Glad I caught you live. Hi from Germany. Well, guten tag to you too. Uh, war heißen sie? Or was that... Is that how you doing, or was that what's your name? Vahisenzi. My name is, uh, no, I think it's Vahisenzi. I don't know. Somewhere in here has got to be a German guy to tell me you know, if I did it right. Oh, Vigetis Inen. I think that's it. Vigetis Inen. I learned a little bit of Schweizerdeutsch in university. And then I watched Die Hard, and I'm like, Schnell means to go fast. I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, uh, enjoying the book. Oh, I knew you were going to enjoy the book. Yeah, take it to the limit. That's another ad that I've got on the on the pipeline. That hey guys, want to let you know some serious business? We're broke. Take it to the limit. But again, now that I've I've finally got some free time to start effing around with these goofy projects, so that's probably on my on my docket here coming forward. So that's gonna be so much fun. But yeah, this is all distraction. Just put this bucket on your head right now. Live the life that I'm living. I'm telling you, it's the greatest. And you look at it, and you're like, is it? They're not doing it. Of course they're grifters. Of course they're grifters. Look, everybody is a grift. Everything is a, Canada is a grift. Did you know this? Canada is a grift. Like, you know how we have this immigration problem right now? And by problem, I mean we've like 25% of the Canadian population is a first-gen immigrant that just got here. And that's been over like the last 10 years. 
We have completely, it's almost like an invasion, but here's the thing. Even that's a grift. So there's a very skills-based, easy way to immigrate to Canada, but it's kind of difficult. So what a lot of people do is they come to Canadian universities. And in order to come to a Canadian university, you have to pay X amount of dollars more than the average person. Plus you have to show that you have, uh, I think it's like 10, $20,000 in a bank account so that you can afford to live here. So what a bunch of aspiring entrepreneurs in Canada have done is they've made universities. And it's just like a building in a strip mall, like a, a better call Saul kind of thing. And then the idea is they come here and do that. But when you're going to university, as long as it's not for like a crappy bachelor's degree, you're allowed to bring your wife and family with you. It's like, oh, really? So yeah, you, as a student, you naturally want to bring your wife and kids with you. Okay. And then the wife, while she's here, is allowed to get a work visa and allowed to start working. As soon as she has a job here, she's allowed to apply for citizenship. And then you, when you come here to work, are allowed to also apply for citizenship once you have a job. And you don't even have to pass your classes. You don't even have to show up. And so what it is, is a bunch of, there's this weird paid pipeline. There's companies in Canada that will loan you the money to have the, the monetary requirements to prove that you're able to, to fend for yourself. So like, I'll lend you 20 grand, you put it in a bank account, then you prove to the government that you're earning money. And then you pay that back with interest. They're like, sounds good. And like, here's the university that you can join. We don't have any classes, so this way you can just come here, look for work and get to citizenship. And they're like, that looks good too. And by the way, here's a bunch of like amazing diversity is our strength home buyer loans. And I was like, holy crap. Anyway, so they get down here, they start doing all this stuff, they start working, they realize, yeah, I can't afford Canadian real estate that I've propped up. I can't afford this, I can't afford that. And so we basically scam these people out of money. Like, there is neighborhoods with $5 million homes. I still laugh at this, man. I went to this one home, we were Facebook marketplacing, a really, like, one of them full-length mirrors, for like 20 bucks. So I drive to this place, I'm like, dude, that's a $5 million home. Why is he selling me a mirror for $20 off of Facebook marketplace? And so we asked, he's like, yeah, I'm moving back home. It's uh, and I'm like, oh, I didn't want to push, but I'm like, I have a feeling we just took all of his money, scammed him. And now he's got to sell his home and get the F out of here. But what does this have to do with distraction? Nothing. It is a distraction. But, and that's what I mean. It's like the, the cargo cult, the bucket on your head, the scam, the grifter thing, right? Everybody's doing it, but nobody's getting laid and nobody's having fun. Isn't that the entire point of this place? Yeah, but now we have some conflict some strife and it's fun i'm like yeah it is great fun ain't nobody's getting paid and nobody's getting laid nobody got famous from arguing with a bunch of randoms online so for all you fate all you people want to be famous in that and even for you this applies to your personal life just as much as it applies to this branding bullshit we got here you and your wife are having some marital issues and your wife wants to talk about it she wants to talk about it you know what talking means Talking means she wants to share her feelings and have you validate them. And then because she did that, then you're like, well, I want you to hear my feelings and validate them. To which the girl is like, no, that's unattractive. This is why we don't have sex. Stop talking to me. And you're like, oh, I get it. So you wanted me to be your gay best friend sitting in a Starbucks wearing an infinity scarf, holding my coffee cup with two hands to keep my fingers warm while you run your mouth about your problems and me sit here. Essentially, you want to be a TikTok audience of one because that is TikTok now. It turns out millennium and Zo millennial and Zoomer women have no friends. As much as men have no friends, women have no friends. And where men just hide in video games, women hide on social media. Social media, TikTok has been ruined now with a bunch of 35-year-old women bitching about stuff. There's a, there's, a, there's a content style on TikTok where somebody does their own one-man performance of shitty customer service, and it's horrible. It's, uh, hi, I'd like to get a haircut, please. Oh, hello, it's nice to meet you. Yes, we just need to do this and this. And then the girl, and it's just like flipping it, mirroring it around so the girl plays both parts. And the girl is always like a passive, um, very confused, tries to do her best. And the other one is just a right, like, bitch. And you're just like, oh my God, it's not even entertaining stories. And I thought, imagine if they had a husband. I hate I'm telling you to imagine. So picture, girl with a husband telling this stupid story. I remember Bill Burr's like, you feel like a newborn baby with your head just flopping around. And I'm like, Jesus. Nonstop Dre again with a $2 super chat. Couch needs Super Smash Brothers commercial of haters. Hey, hey, Chesty, you've nailed it, by the way. Bloodless Bloodsport. No more Kumite or Jean-Claude Van Damme. Exactly. So yeah, you're at home and your wife wants to talk about things. Or you guys had a fight the night before. I 
guarantee you anybody here with a girl who's lived together longer than two weeks has had a fight with your girl. And then you guys like, I'm just going to go to bed. I'm tired and you're tired. And you decide, you know what? It's not worth fighting. I would rather just get some sleep with you. And you're like, all right, you decide to put this fight away. You know, the distraction was nice. The manufactured outrage was great. Too bad you didn't run it this time. And the next morning you wake up, you make yourself some eggs. She has some toast, maybe an avocado toast with the sprinkling of that fancy salt that's all flaky. And she turns around to you in, in the best distraction you've ever seen in your life. And it's like, hey, I want to talk about last night. And in your in your heart, you feel something. You don't know what it is, but it's not good. It's not good. You're like, I don't want to talk about last night. But you're you're a nice guy. And you're like, no, no, okay, well. And then you're like, you instantly, I'm going to head this off at the pass. I'm going to tell her what I was trying to do. Minimize it. You know, I was just trying to express myself and have you validate it. And she goes, yeah, but you made me feel like this and I didn't feel validated. And you're like, I validate you, honey. I do. And she's like, no, you don't because of this stuff that happened. You're like, that didn't happen like that. And now you're arguing about this stuff and you realize, oh, my God. She literally put that fight we had last night in a shoebox. And in the morning, she opened up the shoebox and handed it to me. And I'm wearing those Air Jordans like they're my favorites. What is wrong with me? And like, this is that communication distraction that you get. This is exactly what you're seeing play out online is what plays out in homes across America, homes across America. But let's have this fight the next day. And the answer was there in front of you. Like, no, I don't want to have this fight the next day. I didn't want to have it that day. I don't want to have it today. I don't want to have it yesterday. I don't want to have it tomorrow. So no, Susan, I will not be opening this shoebox. I will not be pulling out the complaining Jordans and I will not be trying to dunk on you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm in her frame. What happened? Exactly. Because, and the answer has always been there too, by the way, the red pill. Like first off, it's memory of a goldfish. The idea of this is if you have like an emotionally charged thing, especially if you fuck it up, end up having an argument that you don't need to have against a woman that you have no desire to fight with. Wake up the next morning, play the nice card. What happened last night? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm having, I'm having eggs and you're having toast. Give her a smack on the butt. You know, a playful one, not like to spank her, to punish her, but more like, how do they say it? It's like uh, pleasure, pain or something or punishment and whatever. Anyways, I don't know. So yeah, just decide not to have it. And then you realize that whole fight last night, the reason that they have it is not because of the thing. It's not because of the nail. It's not the actual fight. It's not that you didn't do the dishes right. It's not that the penguin always faces south. So Stephen King reference for you. It's not because of any of that stuff. It's because as a girl... You live off of two things, emotional things, compliments and indignation. She needs a fight. If you don't believe me, go online, have an opinion and see who rags on you. Is it high, low testosterone men and high estrogen women? Oh, especially when they're in their like middle aged. Nothing a 40 year old woman likes more than to yell at some anime profile picture online or to yell at her husband on the couch. who's just trying to live his best life. Ah. Oh. Zuckerbot und Peach. Thank you, man. I'm assuming that's Zuckerberg and Peach. I don't know. Coach's girlfriend stays silent. Oh, don't get me wrong. I, I have a different approach to this, but this is this is very boilerplate red pill stuff. And then you realize, yeah, like these fights, they're not about fights. Their fights is because my girl is bored, and when she's bored, she likes indignation. So just give them some indignation. This is the whole point of manufactured outrage. Pick a fight over the dumbest thing possible. Because you don't care. You're going to pick a fight because she didn't close the car. She closed the car door too loud. You start yelling at her. You start teasing her, nagging. And she's mad. Why are you arguing about this? You know what? You're right. Never mind. And then you like drop the fight. Now she's like, not only did he just give me a taste of indignation, but hey, let me go. That son of a bitch. And I've had these like fake fights. And it's so funny because like I'll see my girl getting irritated, but a big smile on her face. And I'm and I and I kind of realized I'm like I get it like girls find fun in this and if you don't believe me, how many of your guys had girls that call their mom on the phone, and fight with their mom, and then take it out on you afterwards in the chat? Give me some give me some ones in the chat if you're that kind of guy. Ah, I just got off the phone with my mother and in your head you just know that means she's gonna get off the phone with me in a second. Son of a bitch. Oh, sugar bread and whip. Thank you very much. Yeah, 
Null 20 euro super chat. Shut up is the best. I do not know. I wasn't there. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. But you see what I mean? Like the, the, the signs were all there for you, man. Look at that. Ones are filling up the chat already. The signs were all there for you. And you realize that it's just she's bored. She just wants something to do. You know, that whole uh, Rolo saying, I don't have to game my wife. I am the game. Well, this is part of the game of your wife. Every now and then just be a prick for like two minutes and then stop and be sweet again. I don't know what I'm going to get. Am I going to get the sweet card or am I going to get the asshole card? And as a girl, that's exciting. Every day she wakes up with a different man. This man's an asshole. This man's sweet. This man's a sweet asshole. This asshole is sweet. <laughs> this is a sweet asshole. You know what I mean? Every day, one of the three. And we're wasting this. This gift that we've been given from high heaven of just not caring, but willing to put up a fight just for funsies anyway. Yeah, Bulvark. And he's saying too, some type of women can't get enough though. And this is part of the, this is why I always say vetting your women is ridiculous. Because how many guys talk about vetting your women and vet them for how much indignation they like in a week? Nobody. Nobody. Nobody likes that. But you know what you do? You enforce boundaries. If you don't mind having these little goofy fights once a week, once every two weeks, once a month, whatever. Yeah, you can have those. But then you get those Latina type girls that like having them every 15 minutes. You're like, you know what? It's a, it's a, it's a bit much. I don't think I want to fight and have chonklas thrown at me three days a week. So I'm going to, I'm going to move. I'm going to pass. Nobody's saying that except for the red pill guys, those evil red pill guys. And then online, don't waste it, man. Don't waste it. If you're sitting here, if you got some idiot like red pill people murder babies and your first thought is, you know what? I can correct this. I was, I would suggest not with, with one exception. There's one exception. And I talk about this in my, in my uh, Patreon community a lot where, uh, as a guy, you're going to put your field report out there. Your field report is not something you give to me or to the other users so that they can judge and offer advice. That's not the purpose of it. The purpose of a field report is for you to have the self-awareness to look at your life objectively, see what you're doing, where it's getting you, and if that's a direction you want to go. And if not, come up with some ideas that you can change what you're doing to get there. It's almost like a, a, self, a, a structured, self-reflective uh, essay. And the point is, but you can do those on your own, which is fine. The problem is it's very easy to bullshit yourself. So the audience side of things, there's, there's a, there's a couple benefits. I mean, one is good to have somebody who knows what they're doing. That's my part. So I can be like, all right. So like, just so you know, this thing's been done before this has been done before. These are the results. Here's the old field reports. Take a look through it. Give you some confidence or uh, uh disclaimer before you start running off at the fucking mouth. And a lot of the guys that are in the, in, in the group there will automatically, like, okay, I know this one too. I know this one too. Now for all of us, sometimes we're right. And sometimes we're wrong. And sometimes it's the kind of thing that can't even be right or wrong. And this is where it's really on the person posting the field reports to use his fucking head and not go Rambo. Rambo, by the way, means you're the kind of guy who just follows what you're told, like point and go like a lemming. Like when you see somebody critiquing your field report, saying this is wrong, this is bad, you shouldn't have done this, you shouldn't have done that. You stop, take a look at it, ask yourself, does this guy have a point? Is he right or is he wrong? And if he's right, awesome. It's a piece of information that you didn't have before that you can do to change your life. If he's wrong, do you know why he's wrong or you just feel that he's wrong? And this is where the work happens. A lot of guys can be wrong all the time. I'm wrong all the time. But you have to know why I'm wrong, which means you know why it's wrong, which means you understand the dynamics that's going on. It's not, or like, and maybe it's just the case of you left out important information. Had the other person known that, they wouldn't have been wrong. In which case, that's on you. You wrote this field report. You put the things that you thought were important enough in there, and you missed a very important piece of it. So for your self-reflection, you're like, oh, okay. So when I'm talking about like the the like picking up this chick or dealing with the wife or getting her to stop yelling at the kids or whatever your issue is that you're writing a field report on, you realize, oh. I'm ignoring this very important piece of information because had I thought it was important, I'd have written it down. And instead, I have all this stuff up here that's not important. So that lets you know what you're doing. You're ignoring important things. And so your next field report, your next bunch of actions, they take that into account. You get better. How wonderful. You mean, you mean to tell me you got all that way just by being wrong? Like I didn't. You did. I didn't do shit. I've been wrong before. Heck, 
in the mids watches and the ends like and chesty kind of last time we were doing a podcast together he kind of let me in on it is where we had a moment where he was laughing at like jack ten of hearts with his boilerplate answers now a lot of the times he was just wrong but like to fluff himself and i'm like you're spoiling the ending of the mids watches sir you're gonna love it yeah, uh, the last bits. It's it's a drama filled episode of where where Jack and I are fighting and why we're please and and rule zero dad and all the guys and it's pretty funny and there's like a lot of. It's probably one of the most relevatory things you're gonna see on that series. I think I I really do think, where you kind of realize there's no, there's no teacher out there to teach you. There's just you, man. There's just you and a bunch of other dudes and nobody knows what they're doing. But we can write down what we tried and we can see what works and do our best. And that's all you can hope for. All you can hope for. Hey, look at that. We got Jack in the chat and everything. O-O-D-A. See, you guys get it. Well, Ned, and he's always saying, like, play in the, don't play in the mud. Watch others do it. Sometimes you have to learn things the hard way. And that's just, like, I wish it wasn't the case, but there's a lot of guys that, like, refuse to learn until they get burned. So put your hand on the stove. And distracting you from this is horrible. Like, why do you want this? And, and... The only so when I was talking before about the only exception to these arguments is teaching. That's another thing too. So for a lot of these guys that are responding to field reports and giving advice, they're not even giving advice to the person from a position of authority or expertise. What they're doing is they're teaching. And the reason you want to teach is because you retain information. It was something I learned in my uh, military instruction, they call it adult instructive learning techniques, qualification, primary leadership Q. L5A something. I don't remember. It's been a long time. It's up there in a book. It's a bunch of gobbledygook anyway. So what they were saying is, yeah, this is how people, this is how people learn. If you, if you read something, you'll remember, and I'm getting the numbers kind of off, but it, it follows the right trend. It's don't quote, like it's 16.5, you idiot. Like, shut up. You remember like 15% of what you read. When you hear something, you learn again, like maybe 10, 12% of what you hear. And that's why you can watch a whole Jordan Peterson lecture and then somebody asks you a question about it. You're like, oh, fuck, I don't know. If you write something down, it's like 30%. So as those field reports, by writing them down, you're going to remember twice as much as you would by listening to it, by reading it, by talking about it. Like, holy shit, really? Yeah, really. And if you're just thinking it, keeping it in your memory, that's even less. You'll remember like 8%. It's ridiculous. But... Do you know what has a 90% retention rate? 90% teaching. Teaching something, you will remember 90% of what it is you're trying to teach. You have to activate all parts of your brain. There's a bunch of sciencey gobbledygook about it. All you need to know is the best way to remember something is to teach it. So when you're sitting here opining on somebody else's field reports, saying your opinion here, uh, this is what I believe this, this is what I believe that, what you're doing is you're teaching yourself what you've been exposed to, what you think you know, and what you've learned. Now, and this is where you kind of get into that men swapping notes feedback loop, right? So the main guy, you know, remember I said you before, is he wrong? Does he have a point? And maybe he is wrong. And you're like, no, you're actually wrong for this reason, for this reason, for this reason. Now that guy has his own little mini field report to claim from. And everybody's learning from this. And what you have turned, you've taken a space that was full of a bunch of bored retards sitting here arguing amongst each other like a Twitter fight. And you've structured it into a mutually beneficial value exchange. Men swapping notes. That is the brilliance of the red pill. And it hurts my soul to watch, to have to give a goatsy out to some idiot who's yelling about fornication online, you know? Like, I'll do it, but it hurts them more than it hurts me. Or it hurts me more than it hurts them to send it. I would really rather not. I would rather this guy, you know, Christ Lord, red pill, 720. I wish he had like amazing amounts of wisdom. He's like, actually, in this thing you wrote, you said this, which was wrong for this reason. And you did this, which was wrong. And I'm like, oh my God, this guy knows all my weaknesses. And now I know all my weaknesses and now I can stop them. But I don't get that. You don't get that. None of us get that. You get a chick with an overexposed profile picture that's hiding wrinkles or some dude who's pretending to be one with one of those, this person does not exist.com faces. Which you can always tell because they look like a Zoom meeting. And everybody has that same fucking pose. And they're sitting there like, just so you know, you're a pedo. And you're like, what? You're also evil and far right wing and a liberal and progressive. It's like, just pick a name and throw it at the guy. Anything. You're a librarian. Fuck you. You're like, what the hell? This is not men swapping notes. This is a distraction. 
and it worries me. And I and I, I fall for it as much as the next guy, but I do make the effort to correct myself as soon as possible. As soon as possible. Uh, null, 20 euro super chat. You are the best, really pragmatic. I, I try my best. I mean, this is my job, so the least I could do is show some semblance of professionalism and competence. Yes, the guy wearing a Hawaiian shirt, yellow aviator shades, swearing and cussing and talking about vaginas is speaking about professionalism. But that's where we are in 2024. At this rate, I could be a Republican American running for president off of the platform of Canadians, the best Americans. And you guys would vote for it as long as Tucker Carlson gives me a kudos for it, you know? Dude, and you know the worst part? So he's talking about Nikki Haley. I kind of know who these people are. There's like seven women in politics, and I can't tell the difference between any of them. It's like that photo of The Rock where he's wearing his his khaki shirt. He plays the stepfather who's ex-military, who's trying to get back together with his ex-wife. And there's like, that's six different characters in six different movies, but they all look and act the same. Like, that's what those American female Republican politicians look like to me. It's all the generic tan chick with dark hair and big boobs somehow in a sex scandal. I'm like, oh, I think Nikki Haley is one of them. I think the other one that gave the hand job is one of them. I'm like... If anything, this makes me probably the most informed pundit in uh, in the world right now. <laughs> but we're not talking about that. This isn't that kind of episode. This is the one about distraction. And I'm getting distracted. Uh, when you get slapped in the head, you remember 100%. Oh, I see somebody else has had the, uh, had the Gen X parenting experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So where are we going here? Distractions. More distractions. And they, and they love to happen. And the problem is, you know why they distract you? Do you know why anybody's good at distracting you? Why distracting me, distracting other people? Is because just the act of arguing and picking on you like this appeals to your ego. It's manipulation. And you're like, how does that appeal to your ego? Well, it's somebody acting stupid. And you know what happens when somebody acts stupid in front of you? You're like, this is a great opportunity to act very smart and show everybody how enlightened I am. And you can tell it's happening. As soon as you get somebody who's talking to you like it's a... Remember Judge Judy... And then there'd be a bunch of like hood rats sitting in there talking. Then all of a sudden, as soon as they talk to the judge, they try to put together proper English sentences. And you're just like, I conversated with him. And then we had discussed, as was the thing writ large at the time. And you're like, what the fuck is he doing? And you realize this is what people are tweeting like. Like, uh, I, I blocked the guy, but uh, F you, Rule Zero guys, you keep sending me his dumb shit. And I mean that with all of the, holy Jesus. They just sent 20 more in the time that I've been sitting here talking to you guys about not getting distracted. Where is he? Date psych. Yeah, this fucking idiot. And they like, look at this stuff. And I look, it's like a 17 paragraph essay on the value of anecdotes and a rough schema. I'm like, a rough schema of how I evaluate anecdotes? What the fuck is wrong with you? Why would you do that? And I realize it's because I want to sound smart. I want to argue with people and bicker to sound smart. And it's like, you don't sound smart, though. You just feel smart. The same way as that guy watched the Jordan Peterson lecture. Can't repeat anything from it. Doesn't know what he talked about. Doesn't even know the topics. Can't break it down into sentence structure. But he felt smart for that hour and 15 minutes at two times speed. Dude, for, for a minute there, I was the smartest man in the world. And it felt fucking great. Felt great. Best 30 minutes of hardening my frame today until the birthday party. No fighting will happen. Cheerio, guys. Good luck, man. And happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah, block this too long ago. I have too. But that's the problem is that that's another reason why I like to send like Goatsy to people because then they block me. And me blocking them is great. But if like, I don't know, Rulezo Dad or Jack wants to send me a tweet from somebody and then I'm like, what the heck is this? And then I click it and I'm like, oh, it's that guy I've blocked. And it doesn't block it right away. Like when you click a message, it'll show it to you. But any of his responses are blocked. You're like, damn it. The reason I blocked it is because I didn't want Twitter to show me. Elon, fix your bullshit. Another one of these tards is uh, Billy Ray Brandt. I don't know who this bitch is. Showed up yesterday with her very sturdy German facial structure. High cheekbones, nice jaw. I used to admire these red-pilled influencers for years. I'm like, who fuck is you? Who is you? Who is we? And I don't think she did at all, because I've never heard of her. She's probably one of those ones that, like, Rolo had on Access Vegas once. 
But then I realized, yeah, it's like for content creators, we're just re living a, uh, a virtualized world version of you at home with your woman having eggs and breakfast and toast while she wants to talk about the fight the night before. That's all that is. I used to respect red pill guys. Now I don't like them. Well, what is that? Hey, I want to talk about that fight we had last night. How about no? How about no, we don't? How about I got to finish these eggs? There is this, and I, I've got to learn it still. I think you have to have like a proper walk for it. It's like a, not Szechuan. Um, can't remember which province of China it was from. Anyways, it's their version of like an omelet. And what they do is they, they high heat, but then they twist it and spiral the eggs. So it looks like a, like an ice cream cone. Like, you know, the, the, that one there. And I'm like, that's really neat. It's kind of similar to how I had uh, egg foo yang, which used a little bit of cornstarch to help fluff in the eggs and keep them from burning. It's like, God damn, that's brilliant. Yeah, as you said, half the grift is about being pragmatic in the first place. And don't get me wrong. This is just as much theatrics as their bullshit. You don't need a lot, just like a pinch. Uh, I always thank the internet for you, Ryan. Your content has helped me a lot. I'm from a third world country, by the way. I love how you write. Your books help me to cool tools to whip my daily life. No worries, man. Like I said, for... And honestly, so this is one thing that kind of keeps me grounded is the fact that the work is really fucking hard. <laughs> I mean, it's not hard as in, like, it's difficult. It's hard as in it's a slog. And you really have to stay focused and you have to have discipline. You can't just do motivation. Uh, Dev, need a breakfast pa potatoes recipe. Oh, dude, just make a Spanish omelet or tortilla. You take a thing of eggs and you can use onions if you want to, which isn't technically correct. Fry them in a pan like low heat, just enough to get them soft. And then once they're soft, you pour like six eggs over top of it. And so it, it makes like a tortilla, put a plate over the pan, flip the pan over and then slide it back in. And so that way it's cooked on both sides and you just cut it like a pie. It's like the best. It's a Spanish omelet Cover with a little bit of paprika. You got a breakfast for six. It's like the simplest dish ever. Oh yeah. Uh, about the, the pragmatism. Cause Everything I've done, everybody is normally just running their mouth because research is difficult, but running your mouth is cheap. One thing I've always done is I've gone back through like 10 years of work that we all have done. Like there's reports from Rule Zero Dad back in the day or from me back in the day or a lot to the guys that it's names you'll never know of. Like there's guys that we still chat with that haven't been on the ever been on Twitter. You'll never hear of them. They're probably smarter than anything. I've had them on the podcast once or twice. I think you've met Yui McGill on an older episode. Uh, Frenchie's been long gone, but yeah, there's like a hundred guys that have been there, done a shit ton of work and then just left and their work is sitting there on the internet and it's slowly degrading away. And a lot of it was just trying to remember where it was to find it all and put it up there. And so it's hard. And it's funny. Cause like, like, thank you, uh, free tea. But like a lot of you guys are like, dude, I can't believe you wrote that. I was going through this exact thing in my life at the moment. And I'm like, of course you were. Cause that's how we got this. I didn't just make it up. I didn't learn it in a book. There was some guy who had that exact situation happen and he wrote it down and he wrote down what he did to deal with it. And then five other guys are like, dude, I've had the same thing. And then they kind of, like I said, the process we talked about swapping notes before, and then they figured out. And that's how you get something that's so simple. It actually was like difficult to come up with. Hey, I want to talk about last night's fight. How about no? That took like months and dozens of guys cracking their heads together until finally one guy's like, you know what? I'm not going to use Amuse Mastery. I'm not going to agree and amplify this. I'm not going to engage with this thing. Her fight was ridiculous and she felt not horny. And so I just don't want to go there. And he just said no. And I was like, oh my God, the power of no is all you needed there. He's like, yeah, fuck. We wasted like hours, hours on this. Yeah. Well, you'd be amazed. Smack her in the ass and say no. And life gets better. Uh, Wild Bill, Ryan, I find myself arguing we X retarts sometimes. How do I choose which tarts to dunk on? None of them. Unless you have a reason. Like here, this is one of those things too. When I talk about uh, Shut the Fuck Up being a superpower. A lot of guys are like, oh, that's, I use this and it's great. It's like, it's not a, it's not a solution. It's a holding pattern. You shut up because you're going to open your mouth and say something stupid and set you back in whatever your goals are. So if you shut up, you just take a draw, you take a knee you're like, I'll do this next time when I'm a little bit better prepared. So when do you not shut up? And it's again, you just stop before you open your mouth. You ask yourself a question. What outcome am I looking to achieve? What am I looking to achieve? And if you don't have a good answer, then you have nothing to say. Nothing to say. 
Are you telling me I'm supposed to speak with purpose? Yes. The purpose of speech is not to fill the air with noise to keep things from being uncomfortable. The purpose of speech is to communicate ideas, concepts, directives, setting narratives, that kind of thing. If you don't have a goal, shut up. Even even me online, I've like I said, I'm the, not the best at it. I, I do my best and it's better than most, but it's not good enough. I'll tell you right now. Why am I engaging with stupid idiot 7 And I kind of really did think about that. Like, why am I engaging with this guy? And then I realized it's not because I want to change his mind. I don't want to persuade him. I've never argued with a guy online that have him buy a book. So from a marketing standpoint, it, it serves no purpose. Then I'm like, well, why am I not just entertaining the audience? Really? And then I kind of look, you see a lot of guys that have like long drawn out fights and bickering with other people. And I find I get very bored of them quickly. So I'm like, okay, so if I'm going to do this as an entertainment thing, and this is an example, you're going to apply your own logic to your own life. If I'm going to fight with this guy, one or two comments max. By the time you get to the third one, people just lose interest. And it sounds just like two children yelling at each other. Uh, and then I realize I'm not trying to change his mind. And I'm not trying to change the audience's mind. I'm trying to entertain the audience. So why don't I just say some dismissive funny things or send a goat see? And I was like, and that's been my plan. And does it work? I mean, it doesn't not work. So far, it's the best solution I've had. The blocking one is good. Block and send a screenshot even better. Make it a call. Blocking this guy. It's nice. And it's the same thing for you. At home, your kids want your attention. Hey, dad, blah, 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 blah. And you're just like, no. Go play with your sister. Leave me the fuck alone. Dad, you said not to swear. I said you don't swear. Now fuck off. <laughs> Yeah, Red Pill was never designed for women. When they try to reverse engineer, it turns into slut shaming and tone policing to please dudes who don't care. Being a girl works better. Oh my god, Chesty nailed it so well. It is amazing how quickly that happened. And like every time, every group, every time you get like two or three new content creators that have, I've just found the Red Pill. Glover was great. And then they'll all have the same idea. It happened at the beginning when I first got here because it was Hunter, Drew... And Jack Murphy were in the chat with George Bruno. Like, oh my God, really? Yeah, we had like a big signal chat. Had everybody in it before the great... Uh, what's that thing in Dune? Or in War... No, yeah, the scattering. Before the scattering. <laughs> before the scattering, we were all in the same chat, chatting with each other. And it was funny. And we're like, yeah, we should have some... I'm going to bring my wife on my podcast. I like that. I'm going to bring girls on as my guests. And I remember Rolo and I were the first were like, guys, no. Like, what do you mean? No, it'd be great. It could be good or useful. And so I had to explain the story of Athel K and how he brought his wife in on his business because she was just so damn great and just tanked his business, gave him a heart attack, bankrupted the family. All this from a girl who loved him and wanted the best for him. And it just turns out that like girls aren't capable of handling the male space. It's it's not that they don't want to. It's just that from a technical standpoint, it causes too many problems. So they all ignored me and they ignored Rolo because why wouldn't you? And then Jack started doing his thing with his girl. And then, you know, you know how Jack's thing ended up. Obviously not well. Uh, Hunters, I don't know how his ended up. He blo He's blocked me since then, which kind of sucks because we red pilled on the same day. We had like we're like the same graduating class, if you can think of it that way. But he's often showing his wife like, hey, check out my wife wearing a summer dress, guys. You want to jerk off to her? Call her ugly? Come on, join my private community. And you're like, fuck. Daniel, loving the audiobook, Ryan, it's super good. I'm glad you like it, sir. In fact, I'm not selling this thing nearly enough, which I really should be. Here. Hunter was on your ship. Oh, that's right. He was a stoker, too. So you guys... Is he a nuclear stoker, then? Or is there other stokers? Anyways, there's the book. Go check it out. The audiobook just been out now. Dude, it is sold like hotcakes. I was like so... I've never seen an audiobook sell so quick in my life, which is awesome. Yeah, the hardcover's still on. It's it's on my, my, my current... All that, I'll do it when the book is done. Okay, now it's on the... Okay, now it's getting done. So yeah. He was a mechanic, non-nuke. Oh, okay. Yeah, don't get me wrong. As a person, love the guy. Great. Always got time for him. And this is... We're talking branding and content creation. This is... It's just business. It's not family. Um, what are you saying, save a hoe here? Ryan still often mentioned there's a need for some adaptation for women. No, I have not. I know for a fact I've never mentioned that because I don't know what the fuck that means. 
I, I often say that women should have their own. It would be great if they did, but that's on them. Like it's, it's one of the easiest arguments that you'll hear. If you really must argue when you'll get like, well, you guys always talk about how women are so bad at this and that. How can we never talk about the men? I'm like, I'm not fucking men. It's your job to sort out those ain't shit men that you don't want to have sex with. You deal with that. The 99.9% .9 of the internet loves to deal with that. Let me have this one little space where we can talk about the shit that's wrong with you and how we can deal with it and the shit that's wrong with us. Can you do that, Susan? Can you do that for a minute? To which she'll always answer no. And then you send her that goatsy. And then she's like, this is wrong. I don't like this guy. I'm going to block him. And then you're at peace. Which, by the way, there's a there's actually a relationship strategy to that too. You know, the times where you just want to be left alone. You had a really stressful day at work. You just want to sit down, have a scotch, relax, watch a Warhammer lore written, wrote, read by an AI version of David Attenborough. And your wife wants to talk and talk and talk. And you're like, I'm just going to yell at her for a minute. And then she's like, how dare you talk to me that way? And then she gives you the silent treatment and then finally get an hour to yourself to relax. Like that's that. That's what the goat see is in your life where you just want to be left alone. So you act mean. So your girl gets mad at you. So she leaves you the fuck alone. And I'm like, oh, that's great. If you haven't done, that's another thing you can do, by the way. Everybody's always like, well, how do you fix this? How do you fix the feelings? How do you have navigate this conversation? It's like sometimes your wants take precedence. In fact, most of the time your wants take precedence. If you want to be left alone, there is a combination of words you can use to be left alone. And you, you can write this down. Get your get your notebooks out. That's what uh, Steve the Dean Williams, the, the, the <laughs> I fucking love making fun of that guy. You don't even know who he is. Bitch, get your crayons out. And it would be the same thing. Just look at your wife and say, call her a cunt. And then she'll get mad at you because how dare you use that word? I'm this. And she gets mad and you just tell her, well, fuck off then. And then she does. And you're like, oh my God, she does know how to follow direction. This is great. And then you can watch your David Attenborough Warhammer lore where he talks about the chaos and the space Marines for the 500th time. And it's great. A uh, null 20 euro super chat. Thank you very much, sir. Just because is no compromise with no one. Couldn't have said it better myself. So you lied and pushed your question twice to promote some broad. Is that what that was about? <laughs> Look, guys. Well done, by the way, Chesty. Look, for me, when it comes to like guests and reaching out, I only care about one thing. It's it, like Joe Rogan used to say this too. Just be interesting. I want to, if I'm going to sit here for two hours and entertain an audience by talking about some topic with somebody. I want it to be somebody that I'm going to enjoy. Because, like, I've done it, I think, twice now. That first was the erudite chick, because it was recommended to me. That's when I let somebody else, like, recommend somebody to me. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds good. I fucking hated it to this day. I, that's the worst two hours of my life. And that's why I, like, refuse to stop ranting about it. And it's not because she's a chick. I've had great podcasts with chicks. There was, um, Allie was fun. Danny California, absolutely fun. But yeah, no, no, no. I ain't talking to some other girl in a sun hat and a summer dress talking about being the best wife ever and baking cookies. I'm like, if you want to have a conversation about baking cookies, I'll, I'll have that conversation. But as soon as you start bringing up how husbands should act, I'm like, I'm out. I'm out. You want to talk about a husband's act? Here's how you get husbands to act the way you want. Give them a blowjob and then ask what, and then ask them for what you want right afterwards. I guarantee you 90% of guys will be on that plantation in a heartbeat. Uh, also, just to point out, everybody else's inconsistencies and people will leave you alone. Yeah, that's another thing too. I got a copyright boring on my last video, so it clears I'll continue. How do you get copyright sued, sir? Yeah. I mean, a nuke, you just, you got here too, right? So you're, you're, I think this is one of those, I was telling you before about things you have to learn the hard way. Because as like uh, when I was first starting as a content creator, I thought these were kind of enjoyable too, and it takes you it takes you a little while to realize you know what I'm not put on earth to argue with this fucking broad. <laughs> you just like I'm out. So that's it. We're gonna get to the feelings of smart now. Uh, I'm gonna make fun of somebody because this is like a roast episode pretty much. Hey, there's that stupid stunt. I've talked to Ryan Stone once. I'm pretty sure the whole conversation I pushed him like pretty hard. What was hard, Ariel? <laughs> 
the therapist will essentially give them SSRIs, which I think you know, like you know the, the sexual effects that SSRIs have on the body, right? That's some. Like yeah. there's tons of like MAOs and like tricyclic scent. You're talking about like the, the type of SSRIs that you speak in the pedophiles. We don't give those to men. We don't give those to men. We don't give those to men. But he's not as informed as like I think oh. people like to be. Yeah. The feeling of being smart. Do you see that though? Like it, there's actually a point to that video. If you watch it, it was her sitting there talking about how smart she was. Now, everybody in that chat wanted to fuck her. So they're like, oh yeah, you're brilliant. You're brilliant. And she's sitting there. It's like, yeah, all these guys that definitely want to sleep with me or think I'm brilliant. So I must be brilliant. And she's like, yeah, and I was pretty hard on the guy. And then she's talking to me. And, I'm, and I remember at one point I brought up a thing about SSRIs, how like they're prescribed to guys and they are libido killers. Dude, if you like, there's, if you're, I will never not be Tom Cruise on this. But if you're on SSRIs, your mission in life is to get off of them as soon as possible. If you've been taking them for too long, wean yourself off. Otherwise, go cold turkey, but get off of them. It numbs your dick. It'll numb your wife's dick or your vagina. I don't judge. Numbs all of this stuff. Kills the desire. It's essentially castration. And they're like, oh, it's mental health. It's not mental health. If you can't give me a blood test or an MRI scan to detect it, it's not a health issue. It's an environmental issue. It's your brain saying something's not right. Fix it. And you're like, yeah, this sounds like a drug thing. You're like, it's not a drug thing. Fix the thing. You're like, here, buddy, have the pills. And your brain's like, ah, oh, fuck it. Fuck it. Yeah, it, it, it takes out the highs. It takes out the lows. You turn into a zombie. You become very unreactive. Try If you, I, I can't believe I'm suggesting this. Don't, don't clip this. It's not a piece of advice, but it's just. It's articulating the point here. Go go rub out some knuckle kids. And like, okay, how long did that take? How did it feel? Whatever. And then go take a bunch of SSRIs. And then you'll notice like, oh my God, it takes 10 times as long. And I'm angry. <laughs> like, this is boring. <laughs> like, it just kills it. A liberal arts confidence. I kind of like that term. Oh, oh, so this one. Yeah. So I was like a basic one. Yeah. They're handing out SSRIs like candy. And it's true. 80% of psychiatrists or psychologists are handing them out. I think a psychiatrist is the practice one are handing out SSRIs for all of their clients. Like that's it. Everybody's getting 80% out of hundred people in the mental health industry are throwing them out. Xanax, Ativan, Ritalin, all that shit. They're giving them to kids. They're giving them to old people. They're giving them to, to sick people. They're giving them to healthy people, everybody. And it's like, yeah, you do know that, right? So you're talking about how you like helping young men and shit like this. So, Hey, do you notice that's a problem? And she's like, no, they don't do that. There's all these kinds of different medications, which is true, but nobody's handing those out and nobody's giving them. Oh, we used to give those to pedos. Yeah, we did. We did. It's kind of the point. Well, it's lesser dosage now. Well, that doesn't really matter. Something else they don't teach you about dosage, by the way, in uh, in online medical school is did you know it's not necessarily true that cutting the dosage in half halves the effect or doubling the dosage doubles the effect? I, I, the, it, the name escaped me of the concept right now, but I can describe it. I just don't know the jargon. If one of you guys are like a science guy in here, absolutely go it. Hey, what's up, Swerve? Herodite's a smear across the spectrum. I mean, everybody's a smear across the spectrum. It's so you have receptors in your body. The whole point of medication is they attach to receptors and cause an effect. And your receptors have a priority. So let's say, you know, receptor A and receptor B, and receptor C. They can all take a certain type of, of chemical and integrate them, and they all have different effects. Let's say you want to act, and it's in priority. So A goes first, and then B, if there's any overflow, and then C. So if you're taking medication that you want to affect B, you have to take enough of a dosage to fill all the receptors for receptor A until it starts getting into receptor B. So that's why the dosage is the way it is. If you don't have a thousand milligrams of this, the first 500 milligrams go into receptor A, you know, cause some random effect that's not harmful. And then it finally affects receptor B and gives you maximum dosage. If you cut that dosage in half, you don't cut its efficacy in half. You cut its efficacy to zero because now you've just filled up of all, all of receptor A. At the same time, if you double the dosage, you're like, oh, that'll be twice an effect. But no, you've filled up all of your body's capability of receptor B. And now you're starting to affect receptor C and that gives you other side effects. And this is why chemicals and pharmacy, pharmacology is such like a, it's complex, man. It's way too complex and people don't know. 
And so when you're talking about, yeah, it's just like the stuff they gave to, to euthanize pedos back in the day, except for they cut the doses so it's better. You're getting, and I can't, I can't tell you with any certainty because I don't know the chemistry behind this, but from an outcome and behavior standpoint, it does look like it's the case where its original effect, because they fiddled around with the dosage without thinking through the, the consequences, has really caused an increase in side effects and either a decrease or a lack of increase of effects. So it's like, at this point, it's just guesswork. You're better off just drinking your problems away at this point, you know? At least then you can drink and have like a nice, there's a lot of alcoholics there that have a great sex life with their spouse. It, it may be a little bit limp at some times, you know, whiskey dick or reverse whiskey dick, but at least they're trying. At least they're trying. Uh, people are terrified of passion and feeling out of control. Yeah. It's funny though, isn't that? That's that's the same mentality that people have when they say, oh, I don't want to work out. I want to get too big. It's like, don't worry, man. It takes a little bit of effort. I don't want to go to school. I might accidentally become a genius. No, it's not going to be an accident. All right, Sam Whiskey, $4.99 Super Chat. If Lois Lane redecorates the Fortress of Solitude, it ceased to be the Fortress of Solitude. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah, titration of medication is not linear. Well, that's a good way of putting it. Saltpeter? I didn't know you could take saltpeter. That's interesting. Uh, sounds like a worse mix than some steroid programs. Yeah, like I said, this stuff is complex. That's why, even for like all the stuff the bro science guys are talking about with TRT, look, TRT... I'm not for it. I'm not against it. What I am telling you is TRT, they used to just call it a stack. It's a steroid stack. That's it. But they call it TRT because now it sounds therapeutic and now it's for medicinal purposes. It's not taking uh, 600 milligrams of trend two days a week. That's what those evil red pill guys do to work out. It's like TRT is the same thing. It's just they threw some jargon around it so it feels like an authoritative source of medicine. How is that any different than SSRIs? Uh, Null, 20 euro super chat. Boy, huge fan of you today. Not going to lie. I'm going to have a beer for all the receptors. <laughs> I like it. I like it, sir. Having said that, it's not so much the receptors for beer. It's the stomach and small intestine enzymes that break down ethanol into uh, whatever it is that breaks it down to that's not alcoholic. That's that's the effect that you're looking for. But you can only break down so much at a time. That's why you can get a good buzz going on for a long time and then hit that certain point where you get messy. Messy is when you've filled up your enzymes ability to synthesize or to metabolize alcohol. Melanin producers have quality control. So your 10 grams may only have one gram or two. That might be more than expected. Oh, dude, don't even get me started on melatonin. Melatonin is a hormone. It's a sleep hormone. It's very useful. No side effects. It's great. Here's the thing though. The original melatonin sleep study was done with 0.3 milligrams. And that's what they found. You know, let's talk about the A, B, and C receptors. They found that the maximum efficacy happens at 0.3 milligrams for the average human, average sized human being. And America is America and everybody else does what America does. What do they do? Well, if 0.3 milligrams is great, let's take one milligram. Let's take 10 milligrams. You see that now at Costco, 10 milligram melatonins, 30 times the suggested dosage. Now, what happens with the overflow? It might actually be like creatine, which is a good thing. Like your body just pisses it out and they don't really care. They don't have any use for it, but it could have an after effect. You never know. So if you really do want to go on the melatonin route, just buy like the one milligram tablets, break them into quarters and you're gonna be like, oh my God, it's still the exact same effect. Yeah. And you're not over medicating. Crazy, isn't it? Breaks down into sugars. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, and then the quality control thing, but that's the point, is like, uh, you're feeling smart now, because it's not testosterone, it's not, it's TRT, it's testosterone replacement therapy, it's therapy. Oh, like mental health. Yeah, kind of like mental health, but with injections. Same as uh, the melatonin. Oh, this is like a sleep aid, it's 10 milligrams, it's better. Are you sure? Well, the label looks like a medical label, so it must know more than me. It's like, dude, my I can design a label to look med medical. I've done thumbnails that look medical. I did a thumbnail look like a, a Genesis game. Doesn't exist. Well, that looks like a pretty good game. The box art's great. It's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, amazing what a little information and research can do for you. Yeah, and this is just like boilerplate asking basic ass questions about things that we all take for granted. And that's kind of, it's one of the things I do like about Red Pill where you A, 
learn to start being more cynical and questioning the obvious things that everybody keeps talking about, like the melatonin TRT, that's another bucket on your head, man. Oh yeah, put this bucket on your head right now. TRT, there's a reason everybody says talk to your doctor. First off, your doctor doesn't know dick. You have to go to one of those specialized, uh, they call them clinics, like uh, health clinics. But they really are salesmen though, so you can't really ask them either. Hey sir, I was thinking about TRT, but I don't know if it's right for me. Well, this guy who makes a commission based on you getting it, he's going to tell you that you yeah, it's definitely good and you definitely need it. He knows more than you do, but he's a little bit a little bit biased. I I almost wish there was a place you could go to like health clinic one and say like I'm thinking about this, I don't know, just so you know if I do go on it, I'm going with the other clinic, so I'm not going here. That would be great to get like some more unbiased advice, but you kind of have to just do it yourself. And that was and I mean you keep hearing stories from this like there was this one guy, just some random online guy who wanted to do testosterone replacement therapy, but he didn't want to get, like, he didn't want to just do a stack. He was worried about all the side effects. So he did, like, half the dosage or a tenth of the dosage, something like that. And remember what I talked before about receptors? Yeah, so he wasn't getting any gains from it. But the receptors he was filling out were the ones in the body that detects when you're producing testosterone. And so it shut off his natural supply. So he ended up nuking his testosterone level. Just because he was microdosing on testosterone, which was enough for his balls to say, oh, you're good? All right, I'm, I'm, out, I'm out. But not good enough for his muscles to say, oh, it's my time to run, sir. My time to run. And that's how you end up in that situation. And it's like, but it sounded therapeutic. It sounded smart. Department of Urology and Andrology. Andrology, is that the Department of Gender? That's cute. Yeah. And to be fair with me, that was the one thing. And it's amazing how hard it was. Like I started asking around about TRT because I'm like, I'm curious. Why not? And the one thing it was so hard to get this information out was just if you've taken a certain dosage for a certain length of time, your body start, stops naturally producing it. And I'm like, really? So when you stop taking it, does it start up again? And they're like, it can. If you're younger, yes. Older, no. So if you're one of those 50 year olds that gets on a TRT, you've signed on for injections for life. Like heaven forbid you have a layoff and you have to cut down your TRT supplements that I don't know how much it costs, like 300 a month or something like that. Oh, if you can't do that because you got laid off and it takes you five years to find a job, enjoy the bitch tits. You basically turned yourself into a testosterone free body. I mean, you look yoked, but. And so I, I've, I've decided to. I'm staying natural for as long as humanly possible. I'm like, look, I get it. It's a lot harder to put on muscle when you're older. It's a lot harder to lose weight when you're older. You're naturally dropping testosterone anyway, but at least this way, I know my body is still producing it and I have some measure of control over it. Thank God for that. Maybe we need to go that way. But I mean, it feels smart. I watched a guy talking about TRT therapy. He's very smart. His name is Dr. Something. Never mind. He changed his first name to doctor. He's not actually a doctor. It's like ultimate warrior. First off, he's not an actual warrior. He just changed his name to warrior on his on his birth certificate. And we'll watch this video and the guy will swarm you, baffle you with bullshit. He'll run his mouth about the the, the receptors, this and this. And there's another reason why I describe this stuff. You notice how I use very almost stupid language. Like, there's two reasons for that. One, I think, I, I, I firmly believe that if you understand something well enough, you can explain it in very simple terms. And two, I don't want this to sound smart because I don't want you to get that same feeling from me that you get from the Jordan Peterson lecture. I've watched it for an hour and I've learned nothing. Uh, Null, 20 euro super chat, like and subscribe. You know what? He's got a good point. You should like and you should subscribe. In fairness, there is 232 of you here now, and only 70 of you have liked it. If you don't like it, that's fine. Don't like it. But if you do like it, I mean, hit the button. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't actually affect anything, but it's nice to see numbers go up. It makes you feel like a man, you know? Yeah, it's like those toothpaste commercials. Some guy puts on a white coat and talks science. Exactly. And the worst part is that's everybody now. That's the actual scientists are talking about the business of science because they don't know anything outside of their own thing. There is a... oh. Okay, off topic, but on topic. Do you guys know who Steve Saylor is? I don't know if you've ever heard of him. <laughs> I don't know if you ever heard of him, but he's one of those guys that like studies statistics, and he kind of noticed the correlation between, uh, uh, the you know the noticing meme, 
thirteen percent of the crime of the population, fifty percent of the crime, that kind of stuff. He kind of points out things, and he's not wrong, but it's just funny because there was this guy, and he was like, "I hate Steve Saylor. I have a master's degree, blah blah blah." And I'm like, "Oh, it's one of those guys who's flexing his degree." So I read through it. I don't know what it is. I don't really care about the eugenics and race science stuff, but watching the science arguments on it, I find them mildly entertaining. So Steve comes in with facts and figures, and this guy's like, these facts and figures are racist, therefore they're wrong. And I have a PhD, therefore you need to ignore it. And then somebody looked into it. His PhD is in gender studies. They're like, oh. (laughs) And it was just like, yeah, it's Dunning-Kruger. And the worst part is it's persuasive to people who want to be persuaded. Steve didn't seem like he cared which way, one way or the other. But the other guy, if you want to believe that racism is bad and you're a good person and the press, all that stuff, you're going to believe what he's saying. Well, he's got an authority. He's got a PhD. And he told me what to think. I'm going to follow that. And this is no different than anybody here following anything else and feeling smart. I feel smart because I followed this guy. And he gave this long-winded, it's kind of similar to Date Sykes thing about, uh, maybe I can pull this stuff up. You know what? I'm not even there. <laughs> There's too many posts. I can't follow it anymore. Anyways. Yeah, it's you. You listen to it and they use a lot of words and they baffle you talking about the schema of anecdotes. And you're like, Jesus, that sounds brilliant. And then when you realize what the fuck is a schema? And like, I know the definitions of schema if you ever do XML stuff or, or that. But when when guys are using schema in a conversation, it just means how you conceptualize something like how do I how do I factor this in? You could just say that. How important are anecdotes to me? Isn't that a very simple way of putting it? No, it's, it has to be the schema of how I, of how I predict the focus of anecdotes. Like, fuck off. Really? I thought your whole point was to educate me. Instead, I'm just here to help you fillet yourself with your fucking education, you dumbass. Uh, no, Ryan, I still miss Carl. Dude, I do too. He actually, I think he might be gone, gone. Because every now and then I kind of reach out to ask how he's doing. And I didn't get a response from the last one. So I'm hoping he didn't die. But I don't think so. But then again, his last ex-wife stabbed him. So this new one might have finished the job. <laughs> this new girl he was with. So yeah. And it's not so much that I think these people are stupid and that they're Dunning-Kruger and all this stuff. It's more so about the audience size. When you're listening to this, how do you know what to believe and what not to believe? There's authority. Obviously, authority has some, which, and I don't know how to word this other than acrimoniously, so I'm going to do it that way. I'm going to make it sound like a prick. Is, you know how pre-selection is a way to attract women? Like, if, if one woman likes you, other women are like, well, I'm going to like him too. You know, oh, geez, they take jealousy, they love it. The appeals to authority is almost like men acting like defective women, you know, where it's like, oh, he's got a PhD. Well, I better listen to what he has to say. Not not forgetting, like what have PhDs told you over the time? The food pyramid was good. COVID was the black plague that wearing a mask prevents uh, transmission, that the vaccines will stop you from this. Like, you know, there's so many things you're like, that's not true. I got the vaccine and I caught the thing week after. Yeah, but it would have been worse. Oh, that's very convenient of you to say, because you told me before I wouldn't catch it. Yeah, you're not going to catch it, but I caught it. Yeah, but it won't be as bad, but it was pretty bad. Yeah, but it could have been worse. How do you know that? Uh, Because I have a PhD. Shut up, Nazi. (laughs) You're like, Jesus. And it's one of those growing up moments, I think, for guys where you realize nobody knows what the fuck they're doing. The experts know very specific niches of things, but that's it. And what do you have that's left? And all you have left is the idea that a group of guys that are attached to the consequences of their actions will have a better idea of what to do than guys who have studied it their whole life in some abstract way. Really is. <laughs> Ryan's retirement plan gaming channel. I like that, Marty. Yeah, you'll love it. We had a nice wholesome gaming stream on Friday with the T-Rex boys and we were playing something called Pal World. Like I've never played or heard of, I've never done, I know nothing about Pokemon. I guess Pal World is like the GoBots to Transformers of, of Pokemon. And so now I know Pal World, but I don't know Pokemon. Anyways, so we're doing a nice family-friendly stream, and then Marty starts giving us a synopsis of Two Girls, One Cup. Chef's kiss. Like, how do you ruin your chance of being kid-friendly? <laughs> yeah, I take couches word as gospel. Don't. I'm, I'm just a fucking idiot, same as the rest of you guys. The only difference is I'm obsessive about a very specific thing, and when I opine on that thing, 
I can at least expose you to information you otherwise wouldn't have been exposed to. But I'm not going to tell you how to live a good life. You're never going to, I'm hoping, I, I should say, I should never say never because I might just cash out and do it. But you're never going to see me on a podcast like, going to university is a waste of things and you need to learn a trade. You need to learn to be a plumber. Like, uh, what's his name? Little Benny Boy. He and Destiny, I guess, had an argument about that. Don't go to... He was... And I guess everybody's having a fun with this one. So Shapiro's talking about, like, having a bunch of cars doesn't make you a man. And they look, it's like, oh, he owns five Mercedes and a bunch of Beamers and stuff. Like, oh. So the only difference between him and Tate is the flavor of car. He goes, yeah, but you shouldn't go to college. Real men learn a trade and you'll never make any money. And they look, he's like a Harvard grad with, like, an undergrad degree from some other place. And they're like, all right, whatever. He and Destiny were on Lex Friedman. I'm like, the guy who pretends to be human is hosting a conversation between a guy who admits he can't make his wife orgasm and the other guy who paid his wife's taxes so that she could accuse him of debuse later and sucked a dick to make her happy and couldn't do it are sitting here telling me the story about how to live a better life. Like, thank you, I'll pass. Yeah, but Lex worked in MIT. He's got a... Really? Really? So if I worked at Deloitte, does that, does that get to tell you I get to run the WEF? Like, what the hell? I'm happy you call people out on their bullshit. It's masterful. It's, it's a tough one, man, because, like, one, I just don't like bullshit. I don't. Two, Whisperhead is old kayfabe article. Let me see if I can pull it up so you guys can, like, gander through it if you're, if you're not watching this on mobile. Kayfabe, TRP dot red. There it is. The original kayfabe article, and it was really good. It kind of took a different approach than you've seen me take it on. Oh, I don't really care. I'm not going to watch it. I'm just going to shit on it briefly and then move on with my day. So don't worry about it, Triple Z. There. And so this came out after the Harvey Weinstein, Harvey Weinstein Me Too stuff, right? Like, what did he do wrong? He mistook situational leverage for sexual market value. We've talked about what drove him to do it. He used pussy to stroke his ego instead of just get, get laid. And then why did everybody in Hollywood shelter him and then suddenly turn on him when they all knew what he was doing? And that's when he's like, it's, it's kayfabe. And he brings up that Hollywood has an, uh, a, an identity that it wants you to believe. They want you to believe that they're the best actors, the most talented people, the most attractive people. And he's like, yeah, you're seeing on social media now, most Hollywood actresses are just mids. The real talent there is the makeup artist that can make a five look like a 10. And that's what the kayfabe is hiding. Just a bunch of theater nerds who've been selected based on who gave Harvey Weinstein a blowjob. And he goes like, like, look around. That's everything. Navy SEALs. You think of Navy SEALs, like the identity of the Navy SEALs. They want you to think of a warrior poet. They they have gills. They, they can't drown. They're like the greatest of great. And I'm not saying they're not well-trained in that, but he goes, that's the point. It's light infantry with specialized gear and some extra training, right? It's not bad, but that is what it is. But they want you to believe that they're like Poseidon. They drown them at the beginning of the course so that they can survive. And why do they want you to believe that? Because it makes them seem better. Doctors, another great example. You could have a doctor amputate the wrong leg and the other doctors and all the, the medical community will circle the wagons as soon as you start calling that doctor incompetent. Because the idea of doctors being gods that have the, the you know, it can, life or death is in their hands and they take it very seriously and they have jackets. They take that very seriously. Academia, academia same thing. And this is, oh, I'm going to try and leave some names out of this one because like some of the people I do like, but I am aware of it. If you guys don't know, Rolo has been shitting on, um, what the fuck is that guy's name? When he was fighting with Date Psych and Erudite and all them over science, he was talking about uh, Will Costello, I think was his name, doctor or a PhD or something. And uh, the doctor David Buss switch over, like he used to do good work, but now he's kind of like cashing in his paycheck. Essentially, he, the, the, the claim was the Department of Homeland Security is trying to build up like an incel army so they can set up some honeypots in the future, 9-11 kind of stuff, which... The, the evidence is pretty compelling, by the way, that the government's sponsoring it. I'm sure there's probably, in the narrative that he's given you, there's probably a better explanation for it, but it definitely is a lot of sus. And I do notice that all of a sudden some random people come out of the middle of nowhere with half a million subscribers talking this trash and all talking to the same talking points to the same people at the same time. And I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. These guys is not to be trusted. It's a bit of AstroTurf. 
Uh, ben, I see you. I'll get to you in just one second. Uh, what was I going Oh, but that was the point. So there was, uh, on one of the Costello's research papers, they were talking about uh, bias, and he was uh, funding... There was a specific term, and I wish I could remember what it was. It doesn't really matter in this, but it was something to the effect like... It wasn't saying this is government funded, but this was funded by a grant and something, And but it had a very specific term, and I started to... I know I actually have like a pretty good working relationship with a bunch of PhDs, like Dr. David Lay, uh, Dr. Jeff Miller, that kind of thing. So I kind of reach out to these guys. And I'm like, hey... And they, they take the side of like, dude, Rolo's an idiot. And Dr. Uh, Costello knows what he's doing. I'm like, oh, that's cool. So, hey, I have to ask, like, what does this mean? I have never seen this before in a research paper. You guys do research papers. What does this mean? And they kind of circled the wagons. Like, I don't know. I've never heard of that before, but he's a nice guy. I'm sure he knows exactly what he's doing. And and I can't fault them for it. That's just the human condition. Like their tribe is the intellectual, so they're gonna assume the best out of them unless they've seen otherwise. God knows we did the same thing for Anthony Johnson until he nuked everybody's fucking life. A lot of people thought Tate was the greatest thing ever until he wasn't, and I didn't. But that's only because I've learned these lessons the hard way already, and a lot of people need to learn it again. So every and I'm like realizing I'm not gonna be able to get any intellectual to give me an honest answer when they think another intellectual is asking out of pocket because for them, the idea of our research being sacrosanct is more important and it's subconscious. Like they trust me, I trust them, I trust their opinion, and but subconsciously I couldn't help but still see this. I'm like, oh okay. And the example, another one, Whisper uses. Did I put the link in here? Oh, I didn't even put the link in here yet, or did I? Oh no, I did. I did. Where's the example he uses down below? This is the one I like. Software engineers. This is the example of not kayfabe. Unlike physicians or actors, they have no group loyalty and will ruthlessly criticize the shortest shortcomings of their fellow professionals' work right in the public, calling them idiots and incompetents and whatever else comes to mind. If you don't believe me, go read some Linus Torvalds posts to see what I mean. He's the guy who created Linux. And from what I understand, and the few bits I've seen of him, he is ruthless. If you are incompetent, he will say it. And he noticed, like, this is the dynamic of how that plays out. So for doctors, everybody believes the kayfabe. Oh, they're healers of the sick. They have the power of life and death. For intellectuals, oh, they're better people. They're understanding. They're the tip of the spear of the scientific method. For Navy SEALs, they're Jesse Ventura can kill you in a, with a pencil. A fucking pencil. But software engineers, these are just some nerds. They're all incompetent because they, they don't worry about their, their personal image and identity. They're worried about efficacy. And if you manage to survive in the software engineer space for a long enough time period and actually get like begrudging acceptance from your peers, that means you know what you're doing. But from the public's perspective, you guys look like a bunch of fucking nerds, uh, incompetent nerds that just love to argue and bicker. And he's like, yeah, it's because they've selected ruthless quality control over kayfabe. Their public repute is lower than their real-world competence. For groups with good kayfabe, the reverse is true. And so that's kind of the lesson for you guys in this too, to be like why you want to be a cynical bastard, but at the same time, a little bit of kayfabe can work in your favor. It's always good to be thought well of. That's why every time I go on a potentially, what's the word for it? A potentially uh, adversarial podcast. Like if I'm talking to somebody that I don't think is very good at the red pill or rule zero or they're probably that, my approach to this, I'm going to be on here and I'm not going to yell at women. I'm not going to drink White Claws and throw them off my podcast. I'm going to be charming. I'm going to be polite. I'm going to take their abuse with grace. I'm basically going to come out like, dude, Ashley, I think uh, Chrissy Mayer, one of her guests, like, dude, this is like a nice, fun version of Andrew Tate, to which I was like, first off, fuck you. Secondly, yeah, <laughs> yeah, because he turns out it's like you're not I'm not here on those things and you're not. And this is kind of like you when you're at a dinner party dealing with your wife's friends and that your goal there isn't to have them take your side in some fight you had with your wife. Your goal there is to be the husband that all the other girls bitch about their husbands at not being. Why aren't you like Susan's husband? He was great. Are you actually great? Probably not. But they don't give a shit. They just care about. Do you look great? Do you act great in public? It's kind of one of those situations. I know a lot of you guys may have had shitty childhoods. You know the ones where, like, your dad or your mom, everybody in the church or the community thought they were great, but then they come home and they save all the prick behavior for you guys, the ones he loves the most or the ones she loves the most. It's kind of one of those things. Same thing. It's where they work more on kayfabe. 
It's like, why does she treat her fr her strangers better than her family? Well, it's because it's kayfabe, it's image. So when you look at this stuff, it's always good to be aware of that. Like, are they trying to, are they willing to call out their own? Are they willing to have quality control? Are they willing to gatekeep their profession? Or is the kayfabe more important? And then once you figure out whether the kayfabe is more important, I'm not saying you have to temper tantrum and like, fuck you, doctor, I'm out of here. You just realize, okay, if I ask certain questions, he is going to give me a kayfabe answer because the image is more important than competence. And this is why you can't go ask somebody about TRT because everybody is invested in the image of TRT is a real medical profession. And it's definitely not just a bunch of steroid junkies helping you out by doing the research for you. So if you ask them, you're never going to hear a TRT doctor tell you, uh, you probably shouldn't take this just yet. Why don't you hold off? Probably not. Same thing. You go online, talk to these guys, like talk to somebody who claims to be red pill. Who in this space is worth talking to? And they're never going to badmouth anybody because like I might need to work with that guy in the future. I don't want to badmouth them. Even I've done a little bit like I if I ever have issues with like Rolo, for example, or or Rich or, or John or Troy or Nuke or Paul on some personal thing, I'll bring it up with them privately. I'm not going to bring it up with you guys. Mostly because if I'm bringing it up with you guys, it's because I want to have the spectacle of me being the gatekeeper. And I'm like, I'm not that fucking guy either. Having said that, if it's somebody that I don't respect and I don't even think has potential, if it's somebody I know is just here to make a paycheck and grift, I'll absolutely put them on blast publicly. Be the Torval. And I think you guys should too. Like, be understand the difference. But to be honest, in your social stuff, be more kayfabe. If you're at the dinner party with friends and family, be the charming approachable husband don't be sitting there bitching about your wife don't be one of those guys man you see him all the time the guy that oh i don't want to talk with jim why because as soon as i sit down he's gonna talk my ear off about how much he hates his fucking wife and then as soon as i agree with him he tells me to stop talking shit about his wife and i'm just like i'm out i'm out yeah the feeling of being smart so now we got loser talk what am i on with time here 132 just in time. You're not the guy. You're not that guy. Who do I want to shit on? Let's try this guy. Boom, what's up fam? Got some big news to share that unfortunately is not so good. So I'm gonna jump right into it. You're gonna watch this video and you're gonna cry. At least we can laugh at your ass as you cry like in, in the corner like a little fucking girl in the fetal position. I love the way girls smell. I love how you know, they always make sure by and large they shower and they just have um, an amazing, an amazing smell to them in general. Oh my God, it's Patrick Stedman. <laughs> Lord and Savior, Patrick Stedman going to jail. <laughs> I hate that guy. I love hating that guy, man. He's my favorite clown to dunk on. He really is. Bless that man and his four to eight years of prison time. All right. Uh, I'm currently entering jail. <laughs> yeah, I remember that tweet. That was fucking funny. I'm on my way to prison right now. Like, bro, you should have better. Why don't you tell your wife and kids you love them and get out of here? <laughs> okay, where are we going with this one? Oh, uh, loser talk. Yeah, this is like, uh, my, I did this to the red pill is loser talk. It is loser talk. And it was a point that nobody's really brought up in a long time, so I thought it was time for it. Because everybody wanted, loved to proselytize the red pill like it was religion. I'm like, dudes, shut up. You're not helping. So how did I do this one? I don't want to just, like, summarize it. Uh, micro resolution, macro resolution. Oh, yeah. So at one point, it was, I kind of remember Gervais' principle, which if you don't remember, it's that every organization is built with three groups. The sociopath, the losers, and the clueless. Sociopaths are the people that help things succeed in spite because they attach their own personal worth onto making something better. The clueless are people who like are like devout followers. They are the ones that believe in it. They follow the rules. They do everything right, but they don't realize that they're just basically enriching the sociopaths at the top at the expense of their own self-interest. And losers are the one who have to make a bad bet. It's not like loser as in loser. It's loser as in having to make a suboptimal financial decision because they just don't have options and that plays out in the sexual marketplace too 
You know that whole uh, Pareto principle, 20% of the men sleep with 80% of the women? Those are the sociopath types. And then the clueless are the ones that, you know, save the girls from hoeing. They're the soft landing. They're like, they marry them and they have the babies and they work hard and they get cheated on. They get divorced. And then losers are like the, the angry ones who keep bitching about the divorce rate to any woman who will ever listen to them and talk and calling everybody a hoe. Like they know the game is being played. They know Chad is having all the sex, but they don't know how to do it themselves. So all they know how to do is bitch about it. And it, oh, null with 20 euro super chat. Again, by the way, this like 50 heartfelt fuck yous you've been given, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Just because I couch you live. Appreciate it, sir. <laughs> fuck you, guy. Heartfelt F you. F you times four. Indeed. Uh, Dan, it'll probably be Monday for the Tekken 8 stream. Okay, anyways, yes, just because I couch you live. I appreciate it, sir. Again, nothing but love and respect from here. Oh, uh, sexual marketplace, losers, clueless. Oh, yeah, they develop their own types of language. So sociopaths among themselves use power talk. And power talk is just when you're talking to somebody and there's an exchange of social status or whatever. That's game. If you're a guy flirting with a girl and she gives you like, you know, we're not sleeping together tonight, right? That's power talk. That's her way of like, that's the way a girl says, like, I was thinking of sex. I don't want you to think I'm a slut. So I'm going to say this to test if you under, if I can trust you to sleep with you and not brag about it to your friends. And if the guy responds with something like, oh, I know that you're a good person or just starts laughing and saying nothing at all, then he understands the power talk. He's saying the same thing. I understand your concerns. Don't worry about it. You're covered. Now, if you're if you're clueless, you'll probably say, I would never take advantage of you that way. We were having a good date. I was going to let you off at home. I would never sleep with you. To which the girl's like, oh, okay, so this is an idiot. And then she switches over to something. And the way the sociopaths talk to clueless is called baby talk. Same way you talk to a child. Very, And this is where girls are like, that's a wonderful idea. You're, such, you're a sweet man. The right girl's going to find her way around to you eventually. You know, shit like that. So that's where you get that shit. And then the losers would be the ones like, well, fuck you, bitch. Blah, 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 blah. Just speaking direct. How dare you shut me down? I know you have a power talk. I don't know what to say in that situation to get past your, get past your, we're not sleeping together tonight thing. And, he's, and she's like, oh, fuck. And then they use direct speak. Direct speak is how sociopaths talk to losers because there's no pretense. You don't have to, to obfuscate things for them. Leave me alone or I'm calling the cops. And that's how they talk like that. It's interesting, isn't it? And if you start to look around, it doesn't matter what your space is. Minecraft Let's Plays, Tekken Let's Plays, sexual dynamics, the red pill space on Twitter, traditional Catholicism, whatever. These three people and dynamics kind of play out the same way. The problem is the red pill has an issue. It's that how do you explain that sociopath, the power talk, the successful stuff to people who don't know it? How do you explain that to the clueless or to the losers? And is you have to use direct language. So you have to talk like a loser to teach people how to go from being clueless to being a sociopath with power talk. And it is not attractive. It is never going to be attractive. Sir, that offends me, but I'll keep watching. Sam Whiskey, $9.99 Super Chat. See, sir, that is how you do a Super Chat. Take a penny off so we can keep the Jack Murphy cucking out. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, Sam, I appreciate you boys, but you're some great jokes right now. So yeah, and so you have to explain subtext to somebody by using direct language. And direct language is always loser talk. So every red pill thing we've ever said, every point we've ever made, every piece of jargon we've ever used, every mental model, every essay, every article, every sexual strategy, every positive male identity thing out there is all loser talk. It's not loser as in lame, it's loser as in like not sexually successful. And that's why all the critique is just these guys don't fuck because they're not wrong. We are talking exactly like guys who don't fuck all the time, all the time. And the worst part is there is no difference between a guy who doesn't fuck talking like a guy who doesn't fuck and a guy who does fuck talking like a guy who doesn't fuck. So you just have, as far as anybody else is concerned, it's a bunch of people that don't fuck talking about whamming all day, you know? And this is why it's supposed to be you don't red pill your friends and you don't proselytize because all you're doing is telling people, hey, I'm a giant fucking loser who doesn't know how to play the game. And for the guys who tend to and who guys don't understand that they probably are not wrong. And 
This is why I hate when people argue red pill. It's like, dude, you're here because you want to learn something. That's it. And we have to use direct language. It's a necessary evil. I get it. Mostly because you don't understand subtext. If I could just use subtext to explain all this stuff, make myself look better, I'd absolutely do it. But it doesn't work. It doesn't work. That and the fact it's kind of fun to be a, a play act. Like, I'm not a loser, but I play one on TV. It's like the 80s commercial. And then there's the bell curve of male sexual strategy, which I, I like it because it's a good, it's a harder to explain. It takes a time to explain it, but I think it really articulates what the red pill is from like a demographic standpoint. So like you take all of men, you put them on a bell curve. The one end of it is guys that will succeed no matter what happens. You throw them in Stalinist Russia, they'll have a Stalinist harem. You throw them in a Congolese civil war, they'll grab an AK-47 and three bitches. Doesn't matter where you put them, they will figure it out. They are naturally, they have natural skills, they have the opportunity, they know what they're doing and there's nothing you can do that's going to help them. They think this is loser talk because I've never, they don't ever have to look into why I'm attractive. If you're a six foot two linebacker that's been attractive since you were 13 and your 23 year old teacher's been sleeping with you. It's like there's nothing he needs to know about game, but he doesn't know why he knows it any more than a fish doesn't know what the hell water is. It's just all around him. On the other side of the bell curve, there is losers. And I mean like loser losers, as in they ain't going to be shit. If you ever went to high school with that guy that like you came back 10 years later and he's still doing the same shit. He still owns the same Honda Civic with the fart can out the back. He's still selling weed on the street corner. Hasn't made nothing out of his life. His t-shirt's three sizes too long. He looks like Limp Biscuit, the no-name brand, <laughs> good value version. That guy, you could give him a million dollars and the keys to pussy and an eight-inch dick, and you could put him in a James Bond movie for all the status. He'll still fuck it up. And those guys, you got to avoid like the plague. But here's the thing. The red pill can't help either of those groups. The first guy doesn't need help. And the second group wouldn't know what to do with it. All he's going to do is ruin it. And he'll take you down with him. It's like a drowning man. I used to be a lifeguard in another life. And the one thing they teach you about saving people is when you approach a drowning person, you approach feet first. Why? Because when they're drowning, they will grab onto you with like a death grip. And they will push you down so that they can get up above the surface. And they will drown you. And then you will both drown. So what you're supposed to do is approach feet first. So if they try to grab onto you, you can push them away. If they manage to grab you, your goal is to dive, dive down because they will not follow you down in the water. And then you try to approach them from the back, grab them, pull them in there. So yeah, don't ever try to save a drowning man. Then there's the middle of the bell curve. And these people, it's dependent, depending on the time, the place, the conditions, how they were raised, their socioeconomic status. They'll do well and they'll do bad. It's like a spectrum. Everything is a spectrum. Now there's a sliver of that bell curve. The bell curve has been shifted. Modern technology, you know, Tinder, birth control, all the things we blame on everything. Those all do have an effect and they shift the line. And of that bell curve now, there's people on the, the left side of the bell curve who are turning from, they would have made it in a different time in a different place, but now they've become those losers. And there's people on the left side of that top part of the bell curve, the guys that would never have any problems. And they'll figure out no matter what they're put into the average place. So they know like I should be better at this, but I'm not. If you've ever seen that, the guy who's like six foot two built like Superman, just can't figure out women divorced twice. Like I don't understand any of this stuff. He's one of those guys. He would have done well in any other time and place, but now he's just missing that little, like he got dragged into the average person category. And now he's struggling. Those two slivers of men are the only people that benefit from red pill, I would argue. Everybody else is like, you know what? Five out of 10, I'm doing fine. I don't care. The great guys, dude, I don't need this shit. And the losers, hey, I'll fuck up whatever you give me. It's those two small slivers. And that's why it's always going to be niche. And those are the only ones you can talk to. You know, when I talk about them in, uh, in Dread, the book, I mentioned Billy and Chad. That's the two people. Chad is that guy at the tail end of the, the too hot to fail. Dude, now there's problems. I don't know what I'm doing. And the other end, it's Billy. It's the guy that's like, I did all the things right and I still failed. What do I do? He's a loser, but he has potential. Uh, Null, 20 euro super chat again. I do not know how to text. Point nine. I do care about your sex life. Well, I appreciate that, sir. <laughs> 
I love when when random men take an interest in my sex life. Help me. No, but anyways, they, thank you for the super chat. That's four heartfelt FUs. I think we're up to like 15 fuck yous, heartfelts. So we're going to give you the Sydney Watson Award. Do I have one of those? There it is. Apparently if I click this thing, you guys should see like a bunch of like uh, flowers jumping up and down. Yeah. So that's it. So you don't red pill your friends either because most of your friends are either going to be losers or too attractive to care or just middling around and like, I don't think I need it. I'd rather just struggle around here, right? So when you try to red pill these guys, you're going to talk like a loser. And when you talk like a loser to people who are either winners, the winners will look at you and be like, get away from me, you loser. Or I'm calling the cops. Same as that guy on the date started yelling at the girl who said she wasn't sleeping with him. You talk to a guy in the middle of the bell curve. He's going to just sit, use you to signal to like, oh, I'm actually a good guy. These guys, not like these red pill dudes. And he's going to, he's going to throw you under the bus. And then you talk to a loser about this stuff. And he's like, hey, you were, you said it. I was thinking it, but you said it. And now, bam, you're in loser camp. And they're going to drag you down like a drowning man. So yeah, don't red pill your friends. Two case, two times out of 10, it sucks for you. And one time out of 10, it's, it's helpful for the other guy, but he's going to drag you to death. Absolutely. Don't do it. Don't fucking do it. Don't do it. So that is the topics. I actually managed to stay on point for about 90% of it. So I'm kind of proud. What do we have for time? That's not bad. 146. So we're 15 minutes early. We'll shit on. Can you believe it? I love like, this one. Oh, I got to make that bigger. Um. Actually, you know what? This is this one. I don't know. But I only know what my heart feels. And my heart feels like... My heart still feels like the best... You know, the best is yet to come. Is the best yet to come? Patrick, is it? Out of all the things that have left to come, would you consider what's happened in the last year the best? Or would you say it's possibly not the best? Asking for a friend. <laughs> Fuck, that's funny. No. 20 euro super chat. I don't care. Fair point, sir. Fair point. Appreciate the super chat. Let's give you another Sydney Watson award. <laughs> I got to come up with one of those. Like, have those guys doing the soundboard shit. Maybe I should do like a Sydney Watson soundboard of like, I'm just asking questions. Heartfelt. Fuck you. I got to find that video. I got to find that video. It'll take him a while to respond to you from jail. I'm sure somebody will snick a cell phone up his butt and help him text. Yeah, he's still going. Of course I'm going. It's two hours. It's usually 90 minutes to two hours, man. Every Saturday. I've been doing it this for three years. I've only missed, I think, three episodes. Three episodes out of, what are we at now? 300? Something like that. I always come to work. I don't even mind. So yeah, this is, the, this is the band section. So first off, huge shout out to Null, who's been a super chatting machine. It is funny though, for like all the notoriety I'm about to give him, his name is Null, which is essentially a placeholder for no information. So all I can say is thank you, sir. Heartfelt. And I don't mean that in the FU way. I mean truly heartfelt. Anyways, any anytime you want to show appreciation to the podcast, I think it's like the best thing you could ever do. And it's... And I hate to say it as much as I want to just say, fuck you, Manosphere, I'm out. It's like guys like you just keep me coming back and doing my goddamn job. And that's why I'll do little jokes like my Minecraft one, why I'm leaving the Minosphere, which I, I kind of enjoyed it. I'll put a link to it if you guys are curious. It's just funny. Uh, there, there I am. Dude, I don't like the new way YouTube was organized. Everything looks kind of weird. Oh, come on. Stop. There we go. Don't you dare play that. That's copyright, motherfucker. I don't have that cleared on this channel. I don't know. It's fun. It's interesting. It's like seven minutes. I kind of like doing those. They're just entertaining. They teach me a little more about video editing, a little more about effects, a little more about uh, storytelling, and I like to get better. It's one of those improvement things, and it's very easy because the tools they have there allows me to do a lot of things that I couldn't do in real life. Not without finally getting that, uh, they have this electronic dolly. It's Edochrone, Ed Edochrone one. It's like 1200 bucks, but it's like 
I, I want one so bad, so bad. It is a, oh, it's not a dolly. What's the thing they call where it's like the rotating arm. Anyways, it's a computer controlled uh, thing that can rotate and move a camera all around. It's like that technology they used to the original Star Wars. And I'm like, that looks great. But then I'm like, what would I even film with that? And then I was like, you know what? From a business perspective, I can't justify it. Then my girl just bought me the Insta360, which if you haven't seen this thing, I have my newest, I've did some footage from it and I'm going to play around with it. But dude, so it's a GoPro, right? It's GoPro. And, oh, how is it? It's like this. 45 minute battery life. It's a pill. Like you could put this fucking thing in your mouth and it's got a magnetic strip on the bottom. So if you like have a necklace on, you can attach it to your thing. A lot of people are hooking it up to their dog's harnesses and having their dogs run around. I wore it to the gym for some workout footage. It's like this tiny. Put it in your coffee cup, pour coffee over top of it. Magnetically slips back in here. You're good to go. I cannot wait to play around with this this year and make some videos for you guys. I think it's going to be very interesting what kind of stuff it comes up with. So, yeah. So I got, I got, I got footage and I got interesting new content coming down the line. I'm definitely going to be able to use it for a cooking stream. Like I'm not going to put it in a pan while I'm cooking, but it's going to help, especially for like really tight spaces to fit things in or, uh, odd angles you wouldn't think of. I think it should make a more, she bought you a body cam. It can work as a body cam, but I think it's going to make for a much more interesting video experience on my videos coming up in the year. And I'm already coming up at the ends of the mids watches. Like the mids watches, I think I've only got to record. I've only got another 20 episodes left and there's another 10 that are still in the queue that have to be released. So I'll have those out with like the first couple months, but they're mostly finished already. And I'll probably like skip a bunch of those ones that are kind of not applicable. So we got new content coming down the line. It's going to be fun. I'm, I'm going to like it. I guess I got nothing else for you though. So unless you guys got something else. <laughs> Null, 20 euro super chat. No problem, young. I don't know what that means. You know, I don't care. No problem, young. Sounds good. Just need a drone now. Yeah, I was thinking about the drone. I don't know. There's something about the drone. I just like, I remember a Casey Neistat video talking about how to film. And he's like, nobody cares about your drone footage. And I keep thinking about that. It's like the problem with a drone is that everything I'll film now will be drone footage. And I'm like, it's probably not the best idea. <laughs> Sam Whiskey, $4.99 Super Chat. What's the next book? Fuck that. I don't want to look at a book. Uh, oh, in fairness, I, I am taking a break. But the problem is that I think Dante noticed that. Like my Discord, which I should probably put a link on that. That's another thing. So we have a Discord chat. It's for the mostly the T-Rex Army stuff, the second channel. It's nice. I enjoy it. Uh... Where is this? How do I inv oh, invite people? There it is. Copy button. So here. Join in on the Discord. It's kind of where we just talk about the red pill stuff more casually. There's not there's no like it's not a structured community or anything like that, but it's good and most of the minosphere stuff we talk about is in there and we'll eventually get people on the whitelist to go onto the SMP. It's just more fun. But uh the one thing I noticed on there is it tells you what the other person's doing with their work. And Dante noticed, he's like, yeah, Ryan's like, I'm never writing a book again. He looks over on my Discord. It's like script, playing Scrivener, which is my writing app. And he goes, uh-huh. <laughs> so anyways, the new book is, if I do one, there's two ideas I have. The first one is a collection of case studies. It's going to be a, it's not like a book book. It's more like a novella, a smaller one. And the idea is it's just, they're like pulp novels. It'll just be three, four, maybe five different field reports, different ways of breaking it down. Kind of like a similar to a Mids Watch thing. But they're made to be light reading, nice and easy, and for people who already have read all the books and know all the stuff. And my second one is I want to do fiction. I've been reading on how to write fiction. I'm working on coming up with premises and building a plot structure. It's a whole different style of writing, and I've never done it before, so I'm like, I want to give it a shot. So I don't know when that's coming out or what it's going to be on. It's still in the planning stages right now, but hopefully I get good enough with it. But beyond that, don't expect shit from me anytime soon. Uh, Apollo H, $19.99 Super Chat. Good man, good man. A while back, you gave me some tips about feeling nervous and blowing the first date with this hot chick. I am now in a new city living by myself and way better financially, and that's never happened again since. Heartfelt thanks. Bro, 
Like I said, as long as it works, that's all I care about. Yeah, I actually remember this one. I think if I remember correctly, my advice was something to the effect of stop looking at trying to win the girl, but you're trying to learn a skill set and the girl is just like there. That way, win or lose, you're still, as long as you understand what you did well and what you need to work on, then it all works out well. That was the one I remember anyway, but that's good. A game book. I'm not going to write a game book. Everybody writes a game book and all I would do is summarize the mystery method anyway and add my own spin on it. And I'm like, dude, just go get his. It's better. Yeah, short story collection. And credit to Nick August for that, because he kind of gave me the idea for that one. And my Substack's kind of already getting along on that. So honestly, if you follow the Substack, you'll be able to see it's already, technically it's already a third finished <laughs> by by that metric. So we'll have to see. Anyways, that's all I got for you guys. So I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you had fun. We are going to go to Nuke's channel. Nuke, are you still in the chat? If so, I need a link to your video because I don't know if you have... Hold on a second here. Where is it? There it is. Do you have um, your redirects on? Because one thing I'm going to do here is redirect everybody to it automatically so you don't have to go and look for it yourself. Uh, Torsh is streaming right now. That motherfucker stealing my podcast. Yeah, I don't. So I have to put a link onto it. Oh, uh, send me on Twitter because I don't think... Hold on a sec. I got to make sure that's you. I just got to give you a wrench so I know it's you. Yeah, that's you. Uh, just a standard moderator. There you go. You can either put a link up here for the guys or I'll just grab it from your channel. <laughs> I love your anime stuff. Oh, there it is. Never mind. I got it. I got it. I got it. So here, I'm going to put it in as a redirect. So that way you guys. Oh. Okay, you don't have redirects on in your channel, so this is how you guys get there. I would suggest that. Go to your channel settings and turn on redirects from anybody. Because then what that allows me to do is when I'm doing this show, if you're hosting a Rule Zero, people will just go direct over there. Because we're going to lose some of these guys. Some of these guys aren't going to be able to come watch you. Your first Rule Zero host, you know? Yeah, that's the real nuke. The way you can tell is you click on his profile and you go to channel. And it shows you his channel. And yeah, that's the one. By the way, I love how you used Wicked City. It's one of my favorite animes. It really is. So that's it for me, guys. And that's going to be it for you. Uh, Tekken for Pennies is... I think I'll start it up on Monday. I might not have the video ready by Monday, but I'll have that started up on Monday. And I'm going to be using Yoshimitsu because Lei and Ganryu aren't in the new full version yet. So I'm actually not doing too bad with it. So on that note, guys, you have fun. And let's shit on one or two more people before we go. Who can we laugh at? Walsh. I don't usually post pictures of my kids online, but they're infants and you can barely see them. So, you know, it's, it's fine. But a YouTuber named Ryan Stone, named Ryan Stone, named Ryan Stone tweeted, showing off the F trophies for clout. So the babies are trophies that I'm showing off. It's perhaps not a surprise that a picture of a proud father would be so upsetting to the sort of man who clearly never had one. Seventy nine T twenty four fifty eight learning corp little red riding hood take one.